myself Girish, uh, uh, I am a sector head at uh, ICRA Ratings, uh, heading the power sector both for ratings and research. Uh, ICRA is a credit rating agency. Uh, the credit rating, just for the uh, sake of understanding, let me just explain. It's a credit opinion uh, on the issuer in terms of uh, you know uh, their ability to uh, service the debt uh, uh, in a timely manner. Uh, ICRA has uh, been involved in the past to do uh, MOP ranking exercise for the state-owned distribution utilities as well. We have also been uh, uh, involved earlier for uh, grading various channel partners uh, under the MNRE guidelines. Uh, otherwise, uh, we have extensive experience uh, in ratings uh, various corporates across the sectors. Uh, 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 let me just uh, set the context uh, to open the panel discussion as well. And uh, let me just highlight certain opening remarks for the panel discussion. Certainly, uh, the sector, the renewable energy sector, especially the solar and the wind, uh, certainly has a, a very bright and a quite uh, positive long-term uh, uh, demand outlook. Uh, and that's uh, quite evident and that's quite supported from the fact that uh, the policy support is very, very strong, you know, both from the government of India and also from the key states, uh, which have the renewable en uh, energy potential. More importantly, the tariff competitiveness of uh, both solar and wind has improved quite significantly in the last three, four years, uh, which is quite competitive from the off-takers perspective, both in the utility space as, and when it comes to rooftop or third-party open access market, it's also competitive, you know, from the CNI segment, which is the commercial and industrial segment. So these are the two fundamental, you know, demand drivers will, which will keep the renewable energy story well intact in the long term. Having said that, uh, the sector is going through headwinds in the near term, okay, there are multiple factors uh, which are posing challenges. Uh, you would be aware in the utility segment, you know, there are significant payment delays from uh, quite a few <coughs> state-owned distribution utilities, essentially in states like AP, Telangana, and Tamil Nadu. And that has caused uh, a quite significant liquidity stress for certain, some of the uh, IPPs uh, who have assets in those regions as well. And in, in fact, uh, we have taken a number of rating actions for certain entities, you know, because of the payment delays uh, and uh, the fact that there has been a liquidity stress for certain entities. That's one. Number two, the, we have also seen uh, significant execution challenges for many IPP players, you know, uh, related to land acquisition and also getting the transmission connectivity approvals. Uh, so that has, uh, you know, led to uh, an impact on the uh, project cost to some extent. Number three, there is also regulatory uncertainty in terms of the PPA related matters. You would be hearing about, you know, the PPA renegotiation attempts by a, a state like AP. And that has caused a significant regulatory uncertainty, uncertainty for certain IPPs. Even the uncertainty prevails with respect to the uh, PP and the PSA tariff adoption uh, matters as well. Having said that, you know the overall financing market has also been very, very tight in last uh, you know 10 to 12 months. We have seen the increase in the interest rate environment for many uh, issuers, uh, almost by range of 80 to 100 pips. Okay, because renewable energy sector, most of these IPPs, they have been dependent on the NBFCs particularly, where their own cost of borrowing has gone up. So there are headwinds uh, and, uh, uh, and because of which, you know, there has been rating actions for number of IPPs. But having said that, the long-term demand prospects for the sector and for many entities remain quite bright. Uh, so that's the, uh, our view as a uh, ICRA view. Uh, having said that, I would uh, request uh, the, the panel members to start uh, having introduction and also give their opening remarks in terms of how do they see uh, the, the business environment in terms of the opportunities, the challenges for their respective business and also uh, their commentary on the policy gaps and the regulatory issues. So let's have opening uh, the introduction along with the quick opening remarks individually. Let me start with Mr. Shobhit Rai. Uh, yeah, good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is Shobhit Rai. I'm the director of uh, Prozil Infra Engineering. We are a uh, solar EPC company uh, dedicatedly working in the CNI as well as the utility segment across. Uh, currently, we have operations across 18 states in the country with our overall uh, execution experience of more than 250 megawatts. Uh, coming back to, you know, the uh, opening statement, I think, you know, as far as the state is concerned, we are pretty much, uh, you know, in line with the uh, uh, the good practices uh, in the, uh, especially in the rooftop segment. Uh, I think, you know, the policy is also favorable. Uh, I don't foresee that, you know, as compared to other states, 
still we are in a better position. Uh, as far as the challenges are concerned, I feel that uh, the industry is becoming very cost conscious, which is actually not good for long term sustainability. I feel that you know the entire industry should come together to you know ensure that you know we deliver a quality projects uh, to the off takers. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Kunj Shah from Zodiac Energy Limited. Uh, Zodiac Energy Limited is uh, uh, in solar rooftop and solar ground mounted project. We are EPC players. Uh, having experience of more than 35 megawatts of uh, solar installations. Uh, solar is growing like anything. It, it, is, it is one of the fastest growing industry in uh, country. But at the same time, a uh, lot of disruptions are happening like uh, entry of uh, uh, new players in tons and uh, <coughs> uh, quality issues policy issues like recently Maharashtra and Karnataka, uh, I think most of the points uh, were covered by Girish, but two, he forgot two points like uh, net metering policies, policy change in Maharashtra and uh, Karnataka. And these kind of uh, initiatives by regulatory authorities are creating negative ripples in market <coughs> among financiers among uh, EPC players, among stakeholders. And uh, I, I believe that there should be uniform uh, policy uh, uh, jointly decided by a center and state. And it should be across the, across the country, it should be uniform policy so that uh, uh, nowadays every state have their own different uh, policies and this creates uh, many misunderstandings in market. So my feeling is everyone should have a common policy. And one more thing, consolidation is the uh, key to survival of this sector. Uh, unless it is going to be consolidated and serious and quality players will uh, emerge out of all the mess, uh, uh, I think solar then have a brighter future. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is, I'm Munjal Rangwala. Uh, I run Harsha Abakas Solar. And uh, we are an EPC company. We've done about 480 megawatts uh, so far. A mix of 90% EPC, but some development also, uh, private uh, uh, PPA development. Uh, and I think uh, it's since our inception, 2010, uh, the challenge is not the technology, challenge is not uh, consistency, challenge is not anything else but the business model, you know, and we have to tiptoe around a lot of policy, and rightfully so, it's a new field, so I'm not blaming that, and, but so far, uh, we have seen the certain experiments uh, in policy and a lot of things. And I think uh, these kind of forums are, we have to do more and kind of go towards where, where commonly, you know, it common sense is there. So I think uh, there are going to be challenges going forward. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about technical challenges, but I think more of a business model policy framework uh, commonality and kind of thinking from the viewpoint of consumer that will be much better going forward. Yeah, yeah Mr. Presh Mato. Um, so, obviously, regarding the industry, um, you know, we are very excited. Uh, uh, solar industry is obviously the fastest, uh, one of the fastest growing industry. Uh, um, and that's the reason why Adani is, is, uh, is investing uh, so much uh, in the solar industry. So we are not only manufacturing panels and cells, we also do projects. Uh, we do large projects as an IPP. We do small rooftop projects. Uh, we do solar pumps as well. 
Um, so we are we are basically into um, all all sort of spheres um, in in solar um, industry, but um, and uh, you know the industry continues to grow um, and um, the the cost uh, continues to go down. Um, but uh, it has now reached to a level where uh, sometimes it becomes unsustainable for for all be it manufacturer or project developers or EPC and all. So um, as this industry is growing, um, the overall LCOE, which is the levelized cost of energy, will go down, efficiencies will go up. But what, uh, what challenges which I, I feel um, this industry has that there are too many, too much expectations on, on, on the price and what 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 is sad or what what um, you know confuses me sometimes is you know you have you have a product or a project which has to last for 25 years on the field and uh, what uh, you're buying is just price so um, that should not be the factor uh, on what makes you decide whether to go with which product or an epc or a developer because um, it's the after sales uh, service. It's it's the it's the quality of the engineering designing. Uh, it's the quality of the project that would determine and that one rupee two rupee gap per watt between one um, EPC or one project to another project will will be immaterial in a long run if if the project is not develop uh, is not generating enough energy and power. So. Because uh, this industry has very um, low barriers, entry barriers, so there are too many players. But I think as as EPC companies and as people from this industry, I think we need to educate the customer as well that uh, it's important that a, 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 a quality is maintained. For example, when you're buying a solar panel, you're buying it if you're buying it on price and you know you're just buying price that company has to last for 25 years to give you that warranty and what you know these companies these uh, you know fly by night companies how will they give the warranties how will they ensure that the product which they have given is going to last for years and so is the epc company so, you know, I think that challenge is, is the biggest challenge which I see in the industry because what everybody talks is price. Obviously, in the large, large scale projects, people have become uh, more aware that, uh, you know, you have to maintain a certain standard of a project, um, probably because of the bankability issue there. And that maturity, I think, will come sooner or later in, in the rooftop and small rooftop as well uh, because ultimately ultimately that project um, has to generate power for a for a certain period of time um, yeah so that's that's my starting note as we all know renewable generation is a newly developed industry and it is driven by so many aspects and mostly on the basis of the policy and this policy is made from the central government side MNRE and being a developing industries there are lots of challenges even though the states have to adopt or the guideline given by the MNR or the policies from the regulatory authorities. And these policies are made on the basis of looking to the or the considering the all the states of India. No doubt, Gujarat is a leading state in the power sector. It is running far ahead from the other sectors, other states, but even though Gujarat has to follow the same guideline or the same policy, 
given by the MNRE or the central government. For example, Juvenile has launched Sky Extreme. Solarization in the field of farmers. For that scheme, subsidies are given up to the any contract load or any installation, any uh, it may be 10 HP, it may be 20 HP, 25 HP or whatever. But likely this scheme is going to be converted into the Kusum in which I don't know what will be the final guideline for the Gujarat state. But if it has been limited up to the 7.5 HP or the kilowatt something consumers installation. Then there will be lots of controversy between the previous scheme and the upcoming scheme. Also there are some financial parameters are different in both the scheme. So this policy is continuously sometimes changing and these are one of the challenges that the distribution companies has to follow and the consumers or the EPC contractors or the manufacturers or this may have to suffer. So my uh, thinking is that it should as this renewable energies business is for a long term, 25 years. So there should be a firm long term policy which should not change frequently. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sumit, please. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Sumit Joge from Spring Energy. I take care of bidding and policy and regulatory. As everyone has pointed out, policy and regulatory matters. So I belong to that place. Now, just to start with the session, just a small story which uh, I can recall during my school days, just to make a smile. Uh, during school days, we I was in seventh or so, and we had a science fair. So we three of us decided to uh, construct a wind wind power generator. At that point of time, hardly anyone understands what the technology is, how it does, and at school time. So we prepared. We got one generator, small size. We connected some blades to that and used to blow it. <laughs> And the faster we used to blow it, we had connected one small bulb so that it can get, uh, we can show that, yes, it generates electricity. We tried hard, tried hard, tried hard, never able to do that. At the end of the day, one of uh, one of our friend came in, he brought a small wire, a big size cell, and he told, let's start with this. So it was a small motor, we connected motor and cell on the other side, and had a small switch on the below table. So just before the science fair starts, there was one run wherein all the teachers across the school comes and checks us. You now there was a, a physics lab sir who used to run physics lab and he used to understand this very properly. And then he came to us and we told, okay, this is solar power generator. We had built one small house in which cell was deployed. On the other side, there was a small lamp and switch was below. So sir so told, okay, demonstrate how it generates. So we did, and so another friend from below switched on the light and the light didn't blue. So sir was looking, your wind generator doesn't generate sufficient. Uh, and I'm from Baroda, so in Gujarati he told, Lakota niche thi switch chuti gayu shai, pilla ene connect kar. <laughs> Basically he wanted to say, I, I know you are switching it on from below, the connection is loose, kindly connect it properly so that it can generate properly. <laughs> and always, <laughs> basically we were caught and then we were puzzled and then later on we came to know, okay, this is the way 
windmill or how it is done over a period of time and when I joined Spring, which is joint platform of solar and wind, then I understood what the technology is, how wind generates and basically again coming back to the points wherein we try to do quick fix solutions. As the sector is growing very fast, we are doing a number of things which people might agree, disagree, I don't know. Again, we try to complete the project, we try to do it, we try to do patch up work at policy level, we try to do everywhere in financing, but at the end of the day, it opens up. <laughs> it has to be closed properly. <laughs> Just a small story to start with. So, uh, basically about Spring, I would like to introduce our organization. We are the part of, uh, we are a new platform being created by Actors, which is private equity firm, almost $500 million already we have. And these are the few projects uh, out of which 591 megawatt is already operational. And we we are happy to say in in Gujarat, we have the largest project of wind and which is the lowest tariff in the country at 2.43. In terms of Gujarat as a state, GUNL has already signed about 4,000 megawatt PPAs, 2,000 megawatt already uh, in under SEKI projects. But our project 197.5 is the largest single location project uh, which is now 100% operational and which is at the lowest tariff for RE tariff across the country. Uh, then few, uh, another project which is commissioned is our Riva Solar Park. Again, that was the history when it was, uh, when we won the project. Its opening tariff was 2.97 which was lowest at that point of time in the country. Then few other projects which we have again in solar parks, Anandpur and Kadappa, 250 megawatt each. Uh, they are under development stages. Yes, uh, as Girish knows is better that somehow they are stuck in between. That's why otherwise they would have commission till date. Then we have another uh, 600 megawatt under operation, uh, under development stages. Uh, Seki wind tranche for at different tariffs, 300 megawatt, 200 megawatt under NDPC PPA and again 100 megawatt under Trans 7. So this is brief about our organization. To talk with actually, I had prepared one small slide challenges and, uh, but actually Girish has already covered all these points. So the only additional point which I would say that yes, policy and regulate, uh, this is a regulated market all, all put together. This is being pushed by the government. Earlier we had very small plants, then it increased and then it increased and now it is it is a huge plan. On one side we try to push, we prepare the policies, we try to develop so that uh, government comes up with the policies so that the sector grows. But uh, there are always repulsion forces. As uh, Mr. Shah clearly told that there are continuous policy changes. Central government comes up, state government has doesn't that has doesn't that compatibility, because every state in the country is a very different demography. Basically, RE generation potential is also different for wind, for solar. So what happens as a central policy? We have seen in wind, especially there are seven tranches. And most of them are covered in Gujarat or most of them are trying to develop in Gujarat because wind is very good potential in Gujarat. Again, same is the case of solar. Rajasthan and Gujarat are the potential states. Now, when we go back and say ISTS connectivity, then we have the grid evacuation issues. We have limited infrastructure and we have the push which is more than what we have grid evacuation in the sector. So again, those policy and regulatory issues are there we correctly told tariff adoption. So n number of points are there which are affecting IPPs. So we go back to government. Hopefully government is uh, very much supportive. Every time come back with the solution, but it takes a time. So that is creating a delays. And overall it, uh, as Girish rightly told, that it does delays have created some issue and that's why the ratings have gone down. But overall, it's a good perspective. The only thing is policy and regulatory matters are most important as on day. Once that is in place, everyone would be able to see good progress very fast. Thank you.